say, hey, don't forget to mark your calendar. Worship night, oh my goodness. We all need uh, opportunity, great, rich opportunity to worship. So make sure you mark your calendar. It's going to be a phenomenal, phenomenal time. And uh, I'm really excited to hang out with you tonight or whenever you watch this because I know people watch at their own leisure, which is great. Nevertheless, uh, I was really intrigued by the message that Reese did on Sunday um, related to goats and sheep, you know, and his whole thing, you know, don't be a goat. But, you know, goat is greatest of all times. So there is some value in being a goat, but maybe not in the biblical sense, right? And you're like, yeah, modern, biblical, there's a little bit of discrepancy there. However, I want to talk just briefly uh, on sheep, how to be a sheep. And, of course, you want the fantastic joke. Do you think we should save the joke for the end? I think I'll save the joke for the end. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So I know you'll be, like, eagerly waiting for this magnificent joke, which is dripping with sarcasm. Anyways, so thinking about the sheep thing. I want to be a sheep. I would prefer to be a sheep over the goat, which is uh, this parable that Jesus does about the end times. And it's in Matthew 25, verses 34 to 40. And I'm always interested to see and read about the sheep behavior, sheep behavior. Because if I want to be in, in the family with Jesus and sheep behavior, let Jesus be my shepherd, right? I mean, he talks about it, John 10, 10. My sheep know my voice in 10, 27 voice of a stranger. And so if I am a sheep, um, then what does a sheep do? And if Jesus is my shepherd, then sheep behavior would be appropriate, right? As since he is my good shepherd. So when you look at these verses in Matthew 25, um, it's interesting because verses 34 to 40, Jesus says these particular um, conditions that sheep are aware of people in these conditions who are, have these struggles, who are, find themselves in this state of need. And the conditions that Jesus describes is interesting because he talks about people being hungry, talks about people being thirsty, talks about people who are strangers, foreigners, right? He talks about people who are naked, don't have clothing, talks about people who are sick, and people who are incarcerated in prison. And I find it interesting because these conditions, when we think about being a sheep and we become aware of people in these conditions, right? So people who are trapped, who are in jail, who are imprisoned, and some of that can be behaviors, right? They're trapped, their behaviors trap them. And some of it, we get trapped because of bad experiences in the past. Maybe we get trapped, stuck in, unforgiveness. That's, there are a lot of quagmires, there are a lot of quicksands that can trap people. And so when someone is caught in a trap and they're behaving cranky, they're behaving in ways that are unappealing, that, that would be you know, prickly to us, I want us to be sheep. I want us to be able to look past the behavior, past the weirdness, past the, the yucky stuff, and see the person, not just the condition. And so when we think about that, um, I know that can be behaviors. Somebody who is naked, somebody who is, is completely vulnerable, and maybe they are dressed in a way <laughs> that makes us feel uncomfortable or awkward or whatever. And so when we think about that, if we're, I'm a sheep, if I behave as a sheep, I'm not repelled by someone's external appearance. It can be naked, it can be pick something. I'm not repelled by that. But rather, I'm a, I'm a part of the solution. I'm a part of the answer. Somebody who's caught in prison, who's trapped in a behavior, who's trapped in, a, in, in this loop, a trauma loop, that I can participate. I can visit that person. I can be a part of life, be a part of, of maybe... Maybe Jesus would work through me to unravel that loop, that, that, that imprisonment. But nevertheless, I'm still as a sheep. I'm aware of the condition, and I see past the condition to the person. And I think that's so important for us. You know, we have the world around us, um, strangers, people who are foreigners. <laughs> well, that's a really big deal in our country. 
We have a lot of illegal immigrants, people that have not registered, that are, that are here, whatever. Do we, do we see them? Or are they just kind of lost and visible as, the, as like lawn care people or whatever? But do we see people and people who are strange to us, <laughs> foreign to us? I find it interesting because whenever I'm in a different culture, I am the stranger. I'm the odd man out. And I recognize that when people come to America and, and they are the stranger, they are the foreigner, they're the odd man out. Are we aware and can we see? Because sometimes when people are, are strangers, they act weird or they kind of disappear, they become invisible or you know, they kind of keep their head tucked down. But Jesus talks about when there are strangers as a sheep that I, I welcome. I welcome the stranger. And stranger doesn't only have to be somebody who's a foreigner or, quote, an illegal immigrant. I think stranger can be somebody who is strange to you, <laughs> right? I think that's important to think about that. If I'm going to choose to be a sheep, then I have to not only see the condition, but I need to see the person. Pass the condition and see the human. The human on the other side of that condition and the condition expresses itself, you know, like strangers, uh, you know, in prison, trapped in a, imprisoned and stuck in bondage, all these things. But he also talks about um, people who are sick. When I was sick, you visited me. Now, family, there's a whole lot of sick. <laughs> that can have a, a whole spectrum of application. People who are sick, that could be physically sick. You know, you, you find somebody who's like dehydrated, somebody who's overheated, somebody who's been working outside, somebody who's got COVID, somebody who's, you know, physical illness. And so being aware of physical illness. And I think a lot of times when we see people that have a physical illness or a weakness or, or it can go to the other end. Sometimes when we are around those people, you know, we want to like back away. We don't want to catch it, you know, this, but Jesus is really clear about as sheep that I see people who are sick and I'm concerned. I'm aware of their sickness. But I think it can also, family, it's not only physical sickness, but I also think we need to broaden that and consider there's also sickness of the soul and mental illness, right? I mean, seriously. And I think if we're not careful, when we feel awkward around somebody that might have mental illness or they might have sickness in their soul, we want to keep them at arm's length because we don't, you know, that's a level of crazy I don't want in my boat. <laughs> I get it. I get it. But Jesus says, if you're going to be a sheep, you're going to have to look past the condition and see the human. See the human and participate with the human. And not just the, the behavior and the, the kind of the veneer, the expression, but see human. And I think this is ultimately, when you really boil it down, it's, it's the expression of genuine love that I choose to love, to be loving, because I am loved. I am wonderfully loved. And if you're struggling, and I, I think this is so important, if you're struggling to love somebody, love a whack job, love a stranger, love somebody who's sick, you know, love, if you're just having a hard time, then I think it begs the question, are you letting God love you? Because if I am not loving somebody else, the likelihood is, the, probably the, the real rub, isn't that I can't work it up, but more so, I think, and First John, it talks about it, I love because I am loved. And if I'm not letting God love me, then I'm going to have a hard time working up love for somebody else. I can only push myself to a certain level, and then I run out of Sarah, and it's usually pretty soon. But if I am available for God to love me and let God love me at, in different ways, in different seasons, in different experiences, being aware and maybe even asking God, would you please help me to receive your love? Help me to be aware of you loving me, making yourself available to be loved by your heavenly father because your heavenly father is love. So I think at the crux of all of these behaviors and these conditions, as, as a sheep, if I'm sheep, then I say I am loved. I recognize, and I would only, only, not only say it, but I let myself experience God loving me. I'm available for God to love me. 
And so when I see people who are foreigners, strangers, when I see people who are uh, trapped, imprisoned, they're, they're stuck in a, in a trauma loop, whatever, they're in prison. When I see people who are sick or naked, and when I see people, and this is the other thing Jesus describes, when somebody is thirsty, thirsty, and it's like you, got, you can't slake that thirst, or hungry, there's not enough food. And there's a lot in our society that there's, there's physical hunger and there's physical thirst, but I think there's also hunger and thirst in our souls and in our hearts. I think there's hunger and thirst that we chase, and sometimes we chase after illusions, we chase after cotton candy, we think this is gonna solve, this is gonna fix, this is gonna fill, satiate, this is gonna slake my thirst, this is gonna fill my hunger, and that's the world around us. The world around us, people around us, and you might be watching right now and you're like, I am hungry, I am thirsty. And Jesus says to us, all you who are hungry and thirsty and weak and heavy laden, come to me. And Jesus is our bread of life. <laughs> Jesus is the living water. And so family, we, let's, let's as sheep, let's be decided, let's be determined that we continue to stay close with our heavenly father, to be available for God to love us, but also as sheep, that I see not just conditions around me, but I see humans. And no, no matter how the human presents themselves to me, whether they're naked, they're a stranger, they're uh, sick, they're naked, they're thirsty, they're weak, whatever, whatever the condition, let's not just get all distracted by the condition and let's see the human past the condition. It's a challenge, it's a challenge for me, absolutely a challenge but I think as well for each one of us. And I think the challenge that we have in front of us, not just on the behavior to, to treat others nice and graciously and you know thirsty, feed them, hungry, all that, but also for ourselves, that we continue to stay close to Jesus, no matter what, that no matter what we're doing, no matter where we're at, we're in the grocery store, we're at work, we're waiting for the bus, we're in the you know, line to pick up the kids, whatever it is, that we continue to stay close with Jesus. Because Jesus, if I'm going to be a sheep, then I need to let Jesus be my shepherd. And I need to let Jesus, <laughs> let Jesus speak into my heart, speak into my soul. My sheep know my voice and the voice of a stranger. They won't follow. And just encourage you as we finish this time and, you know, I've talked about Jesus being our shepherd and, and sheep behavior, you know, and all these things re related to conditions. But I'll finish with this. Psalms 23 is the, the fantastic good shepherd psalm, the 23rd psalm. So I just encourage you as we finish this time together, maybe you just take a pause for a moment and read through Psalm 23 and say, yes, the Lord is my shepherd. And really nestle in and say, because you are my shepherd, I am your sheep, then we get to work together uh, to do these things, to express genuine love, past the condition and to the human on the other side. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to mark your calendar for Jared Anderson. It's going to be a really powerful night of worship, and you absolutely don't want to miss it. And here's your fantastic joke, because I know we're all super excited about these jokes. I say with dripping sarcasm. And this is kind of fun because it's a little bit post-Olympics, uh, right? We're done with the Olympics. So what do you call a nerv nervous javelin? You remember the javelin thrower, right? The javelin. What do you call a nervous javelin thrower? You call him Shakespeare. <laughs> that was so great. Oh my gosh, that was really good. And Sunday, I'm doing the message Sunday, and I'm really going to get a fantastic joke for Sunday, so you don't want to miss it. Thank you so much. Let's be sheep. God bless you. Have a great weekend. Hope to see you Sunday.